end up after students. We're going to uh, do something different today. We're going to uh, maybe start today's a trial run uh, doing our chapel Facebook Live. A couple people have said, uh, one in Georgia, one in North Carolina, one in South Carolina, hey, we'd like to watch chapel. We always hear about your chapel. So we may start doing, well, we're going to try do a trial today. It'll look better after today. But get out your cell phones. And uh, what do they need to do, Christian? Go to Dr. Miller's Facebook. Go to my Facebook. And hit the share button. Hit the share, share button. It'll share it to your Facebook or whatever social media you have. And then people can watch it through you. Not only through him, but through you as well. And what if they turn their phones off? They turn their phones off? Yeah. During chat. We're watching it right now, but Dr. Miller. Okay. All right. Now hit, hit your share button, right? Mm -hmm. Hit your share button. And so uh, your parents and so forth can see it. <laughs> All right, say that one more time, Christian. Okay. <clears throat> Go to Dr. Miller's Facebook. One, you'll see it says live video in Atlanta Coast Baptist College Chapel. Hit share, and then hit share now. Or you can write both. But okay, Brother Finkhart, let's start chapel. All right, good morning. Let's all stand. Take our songbook, song 663, Walking with Jesus. Ladies, you sing the top line, men, you sing the bottom line, then we'll switch it when we sing it the second time. Song 663, Walking with Jesus. Song 676, let's sing about Jesus, the lily of the valley. Song 676, we'll sing all three verses, and I want to hear Hallelujah shout it out there on the chorus. And we'll sing it out, shout it out. Especially since we're on video, I don't want to be the only one shouting. Uh, but let's <laughs> sing as if we're excited about Christ being the lily of the valley, being our Savior. Let's sing verse 2. He, all my griefs has taken, and all my sorrows born. In temptation, he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken.
Well, we said we're just trying this out. We planned this all of 14 minutes before the service this morning, but several people have suggested it, and we started to get some messages. People said we're having to lay on our side to see it, so um, straighten it up, please. So we did, but uh, uh, we want to uh, uh, have a normal chapel time. So you folks who are watching on Facebook, this is intended for our students and staff. But this is a normal Tuesday chapel, and Tuesdays are special to me. And I believe they're special to the Lord because we, we give testimonies of what God did to us, through us, for us, by us, uh, over the weekend of our students in ministry. So very quickly, let's uh, have some testimonies. All right, Joe. I got to see a 16-year-old girl get saved on a Saturday. You got to lead a 16-year-old young lady. <laughs> Praise God. Evan. Uh, on Saturday, Josiah and I were paired up due to lack of people to help out. So while we were doing some expansion work in the bus ministry, he was able to lead some, someone to Christ while I continued on and finished uh, Amen. the expansion. So. Amen. So you're doing more reach out in your bus ministry. And, uh, and Josiah and you got to lead some people to Christ. Amen. Anyone else? Uh, Sarah Grace. For an opportunity to walk to one of the children I've been praying I could invite to Master's Club, and his mom said he could come tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Yes, Kelsey. Um, last night at work, I had one of my cashiers come up to me, and I was able to give her a turn for salvation, but I'm also using everything I used in the modules last week to be able to help her. Amen. We had modules last week, and uh, uh, that's something that I want to praise the Lord about. Uh, but for those of you who are watching on Facebook, you've fallen down now, you laid on your side. But I don't feel bad because the great Byron Fox, Byron Fox, <laughs> in his Facebook lives, he has to reach forward all the time and straighten it up, straighten it up, straighten it up. So at least you won't get a nostril shot of me today. You may see my shoes if you fall on the floor again. But uh, uh, Kelsey's been witnessing at work, food line grocery store, and somebody came and asked her, for help and in the counseling module she was in last week she learned things she was able to use last night with this person I want to uh, give a testimony we'll take some more tomorrow but uh, I want to thank God for the modules for Dr. Blue being here teaching the missions module and then Mrs. Householder being here and the uh, module uh, for prevalent problems today and then as my volunteer job being coach of our boys basketball team we went to a tournament in Martinsburg West Virginia and God uh, humbled us uh, sufficiently but our guys played hard but while we were there uh, while we were there Katie Brown and this householder and I went to the RU reformers unanimous and Katie played the piano for him one of our graduates and then uh, Mrs. Householder gave a testimony and uh, it really, really, really was a blessing to hear. And students, we're getting ready to pray, so I want you to hear this testimony on answered prayer. A fellow got up, I think his name's Victor, and he said, it's good to see Miss Householder here tonight. He said, I found a Bible with a prayer list in it that had been set aside for a couple months, and he took out the prayer list. It was dated October 14th. And he said, on October 14th, here at our RU, we got our RU prayer list, and one of the people we were praying for was Mrs. Householder. And she said, he said, uh, we prayed that God would help her. And uh, he said, it's good to see her here being helped. Well, then Mrs. Householder got up and gave the testimony. On October 17th is when Dr. Miller called and said, can I help you raise funds and help you in your ministry? And so students, here were these uh, students at RU praying for God to help one of their mission projects and God was answering a prayer. I didn't know that. Nobody said, hey, they're praying for this lady over here. I didn't know that. God was speaking to my heart and uh, God put it all together. Now, students, that ought to be an encouragement to you to pray. And uh, I've got another praise. Remember we said we needed just a little over $50,000 of our $78,000 for our Victory Fund banquet this Friday night and to come in and pay, uh, pay all our college bills above tuition. 
Well, that $50,000, because of money that came in this weekend, is now down to 43275 And <clears throat> another thing we ask you to pray about me preaching at the RU in Martinsburg, and I did. Three folks prayed to get saved, and 19 Christians prayed to make decisions. And that was a blessing. And then, Sunday morning, the ladies' group went with me to Denton, Maryland, and uh, we had uh, 25 Christians come forward making decisions, and they gave our college $838, and that went into that total, bringing that total that we need down to $43,275. Brother Gilbert, you had a blessing this weekend. I saw it on Facebook. Let's give God the glory. Yeah, tell about that. One of our ladies brought a uh, sister in her 80s, maybe close to 90, and she trusted Christ as her Savior. Amen. This week she brought two more sisters, both up in age, and they both got saved all. So that's three sisters. I said, you're doing your homework, Betty. She said, well, I've got one more. Keep praying. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, right now, let's pray, and let's... Uh, uh, ask God to bring in the $43,000 to the banquet. We have, uh, I think, 77 reservations, and you can still get people up to tomorrow morning uh, to come to the banquet, even Thursday morning. We have room for 96. And let's pray also for this one person yet who needs saved up in Cockerville, Pennsylvania. Isn't that something? Three ladies over 80 all get saved. And uh, then let's pray for Katie Brown one of our graduate staff members. She has her high school music group uh, at competition this morning, Christian school competition. So let's pray for her. Is this a prayer request? Yes. Yes. Uh, my church back home in West Virginia, Maranatha Baptist Church, it is starting to have roof problems where it's leaking. And my dad just told me about this yesterday. So okay. please pray for them as they... All right. Let's go into prayer. Maranatha Baptist Church roof. This lady in Cochranville, Pennsylvania needs saved. Let's thank God for all of these things, and let's pray for Katie Brown and her uh, choirs from the Christian School Competition. God, thank you so much for answering prayer. Thank you, God, for Soul Saved Friday night in Martinsburg. Thank you for Soul Saved in Cochranville. Thank you for decisions made in Denton, Maryland. Thank you for our students winning people to Christ on bus visitation and regular visitation. God, be with this. Uh, worker of Kelsey's that her spiritual needs in life uh, in life would be met. God, please be with uh, the money we need yet, $43,275. Lord, if it all came in today, we'd be able to apply it to bills and that and the tuition that will come in will get us through the end of the school year. And God, we uh, pray that our students and our staff, each one of us will give and know what to give at the banquet Friday night. Lord, be with Katie and her uh, younger choir and her older choir at competition. It's the first time our Christian school's ever gone to that. Teach the young people lessons about preparation and, and uh, trusting you and doing their best in the competitions today. Now, God, give us what we need in chapel this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, fellas, you come up and sing. They're going to sing. Uh, what song you sing? Nothing but Nothing but the blood, and then uh, I want all of you to turn to 2 Corinthians 5.17. Amen.
Turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 5.17. While they were singing, I was looking on. Uh, we don't have a lot of viewers today, but nobody knew we were going to do this. But um, we have right now a viewer, a viewer in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, a fellow I knew from the 1970s. We have um, uh, some of you know Brother Nick over in Winchester, Virginia. Uh, he's looking in. A young lady, she said, I was in Brother Miller's chapel 15 years ago. She's in Pennsylvania. Here's one that really tickles me, though. Brother Mike Vesey, missionary in Honduras, is, uh, is watching, or at least checked in. And then uh, we've got some folks here, and we've got some folks in North Carolina. And uh, your friend who was here last week, Mrs. Householder, she's watching. But look, if you will, at 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17. The purpose of today's message, I believe, but God always surprises me, is to help you be assured of two things. Number one, to be assured that uh, God can give you power to change your life whenever you run into something that's not right, maybe a habit or an addiction that you've formed, or maybe it's even a... Um, Something that you need to see changed for the positive, a thou shalt, as opposed to a thou shalt not. And uh, you need to know that God can change your life. Number two, uh, you need to know for the people you're working with that God can change their lives. Pastor Gilbert will tell you <laughs> that his church is full of people and he thanks God they are not what they were. <laughs> and I can tell you, that I, I see freshmen come in, and man, they all look right the first day or two. But if you could open up their hearts and minds and see all the changes that have to be made in their lives, I thank God that four years later, most of them aren't what they were when they came. And I thank God that I'm not what I was. And I don't have to be what I am. God changes lives. God changes eternal destinations. And here in 2 Corinthians 5.17, let's read this out loud together. 2 Corinthians 5.17, this is God talking, ready, begin. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Lord, please speak to our hearts through me today, even as you spoke to my heart uh, over the last few weeks about this verse and the, the truths in it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, I want to share with you a little about the verse, so this is our starting point. This is not really our text. But notice in this verse it says, if any man be in Christ. This is not a verse for everybody. It doesn't say if any man be on the church roll, he's a new creature. It doesn't say if any man be in, in a, a catechism uh, class, he's a new creature. It doesn't say if any man is partaking of Holy Communion, he's a new creature. Or if any man's in the water of baptism, He's a new creature. Or if any man is in a 12-step program, he's a new creature. It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Well, how do you get into Christ? Well, you start by getting Christ in you. <laughs> Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will, what? Come into him. So you start by getting Christ in you. John 1.11 says, sad verse. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But verse 12 says, but as many as received him, see, Christ in them, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we trust in Christ. We believe that the Lord Jesus Christ was the son of God. He died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised from the dead. And when we believe on him, the Bible says that we become a child of God, a son of God. Now, I want you to notice here the prepositions. John 3, 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting Christ. See, there's your belief, your faith 
in him. That's being in Christ. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so when you get Christ in you, the Bible says that we are baptized into his body and our faith is in him. So here's, a, here's scripture, a promise, a principle that's only guaranteed for people who are in Christ. Second thing I notice, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. You've heard people say before, well, I'd like to get saved, but you know, there, there's really no reason to because I can't live it. How many of you have ever heard someone say that while you've been witnessing to them? Almost all of you have your hands up. I'd like to get saved, but there's no use because I can't live it. Bingo, you're right. You can't live it. I can't live it because we were born with the sin nature and we live our lives in what the Apostle Paul said is our wicked flesh. Men, we spend a lot of money on our wicked flesh, don't we? Combing it, spraying it, scrubbing it. And then when you get older, rubbing cream into it, you know, for people 50 and older, so forth. But anyways, uh, we spend a lot of money on, on our wicked flesh. And uh, one day the Bible says God's going to take care of that wicked flesh. The skin worms are going to take care of it in the grave. <laughs> uh, but one day Jesus is going to raise that flesh and uh, uh, you'll have the glorified body. But notice it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Though we live in, though we live in a wicked flesh, we have a new nature. The Bible says we're a new creature. And then the Bible says old things are passed away. So all those old sins, old habits, uh, old uh, desires pass away. And the Bible says, behold, all things, not most things, all things have become new. Now turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I said God had been speaking to my heart about this verse for a number of weeks. And, and I keep getting new messages out of this verse. <laughs> uh, and, and this is different. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 12 is what we're going to be looking at. And I want you to see what God did for you and for me when we got saved. And then what he would be glad to do for us in the future. The Bible tells us in verse 11a what we were. What we were. And such were some of you. What were we? Well, before we got saved, look at verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous were not righteous. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, effeminate, people who are confusing the sexes, you see, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous. Man, covetousness. I'd really like. And you know what I want? I want. I'd be, I'd be happy if I just had. That's right up there with the drunkards and the revilers and the thieves, folks. Covetousness is saying God hasn't been good enough to me. Wow. Nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. We don't have a very good pedigree, do we? We don't have a good past history. In fact, this sounds like a spiritual rap sheet. This is our spiritual rap sheet. Man, Brother Miller, that's all sin. We were sinners. But I want you to see, once you get saved, what you are. This is in the sight of God. What you are. You may not be completely this in your everyday life yet, but we're going to get to that. But notice what we are now in the eyes of God. Verse 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. 1 John 1, 7, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us of all sin. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. Glory to God. In the sight of God, we're already 
set apart from our sin unto him. But ye are justified. You've heard preachers say justified means it's just as if you'd never sinned. You're declared not guilty. Justified. How'd I get that? By joining the church? No. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. This is what we are. Now let's put to rest right now. I'm a nobody. God, God can't take me. God's not happy with me because of my past. I'm nothing. I'm a dirt ball. Well, all those are true. <laughs> Thanks, Brother Miller. <laughs> oh, by the way, don't forget tomorrow's the first of the month. March tuition is due. Be sure to pay me so I can insult you next week in chapel. <laughs> but no, all those are true about you and true about me too. Um, but God took and expunged our record and stamped not guilty. He washed away our sins and stamped clean. He said, you're justified. You're good enough to get to heaven. You're acceptable now in my sight. And the Bible says that we're not what we were. When you start, when the devil takes your memory and goes to the dumpster part of your memory and drags out what you were, you drag this verse out and quote it to the devil. Quote it to yourself. Quote it to the devil. And thank God for it. You don't have to quote it to God. <laughs> this is what we are in the sight of God. Amen. That's right. This ought to take care of our self, poor self-image problem. But I want you to notice now, we saw what we were. We saw what we are. I want you to notice what our limitation is. What our limitation is. Well, Brother Miller, actually, I still sin once in a while. and uh, But in God's sight, I'm already washed sanctified, justified, so I can just do anything I want. Well, you can, but you should. Look at verse 12. All things are lawful unto me. Let's go back to some of those verses I quoted earlier. When I stop, you fill in the blank. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, John 3, 15 now, but have eternal life. Eternal. Eternal life. See, so all things are lawful unto me, right? I can get mad. Hey, Joe, I can, uh, I can pick up a book, throw it at him, hit him in the head, and uh, injure him, and I'm still going to heaven. All things are lawful unto me. John 3, 16, Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting. everlasting life. John 5, 24, eternal life. John uh, 3, 36, everlasting life. We're saved forever. The Bible says we're sealed unto the day of redemption. We're saved forever. But it's probably not a good thing to continue in our sin. The Bible says one of the things that could happen if we continue in our sin is it can become habit form. And that will screw up your life and a bunch of other people's. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. They're not good for me. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So there are limitations uh, to our Christian walk. There's another place where it's talking about all things being lawful. And it says, though, that we shouldn't uh, participate in anything that would be a block of stumbling for somebody else. There are limitations. We're just going to read through it quickly. But let's read through verses 13 to 20. And, and don't, uh, don't zone out. Put your eyeballs on the page and read through this quietly while I read. Meats for the belly and the belly for the meats. Some people have discovered that, that scriptural truth. But God shall destroy, destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot. Man, there's a lot of teaching and preaching in here, but we're just reading it. God forbid! What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body, for two saith he shall be one flesh? I'll just say this. Any sin you commit as a Christian, you're dragging God in on it with you. Think of that. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. 
But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, you're not your own? For you're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now we saw what we were, we saw what we are, praise God. We saw what our limitations are. I want you to look at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and see the power whereby you and I can live up to our standing before God. Our standing is we're washed, right? Our standing is we're, we're uh, forgiven and we're, we're justified and we're sanctified. But how can I live that way every day? Well, I've got good news for you. I shared this on Friday night at, uh, in Martinsburg, West Virginia. You and I don't have to do this in our own strength. You know what? I did my children an injustice. I didn't know any better, but I did them an injustice. I raised them partly by this philosophy. You just need to try harder. If David got in trouble, I'd say, son, you just need to try harder. If Tamara got in trouble, I'd say, Tammy, you need to try harder. Sarah, you need to try harder. <clears throat> that's, that's frustrating. That's advice that will frustrate somebody. Because Galatians 5 says trying harder with the flesh will only produce the works of the flesh. Right. So trying harder with your own flesh is not the answer. But Galatians 5 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is. And then it goes on and lists the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. Well, where will I get the power to live the Christian life, the new life, the, the resurrected life? We saw this when we were studying baptism in Baptist polity and history class. Romans 6, 4. Therefore... We're buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Now here's where it gets good. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. How can I walk in newness of life? I can't. No, you can't. But God can, amen? And he will take the power that he used to raise Jesus from the dead... I said in that class, a uh, Baptist history class, uh, I heard a preacher preaching. Man, he was waxing eloquent. And he said, he, he was, uh, I, I was driving late at night down south, and he was what Dr. Curtis Hudson used to call a southern wind sucker. And he was preaching away, and it was good, and just his wind sucking got me excited. And he said, I want to tell you, <gasps> that's the wind sucker, uh, that uh, Jesus was dead, all dead in the grave. But after three days, he got tired of being dead, and he tore those grave clothes off and rolled the stone away. And I could hear people where that was being recorded shouting amen. I could just visualize them waving their hanky around, throwing hankies and, and so forth. And, and, uh, and I'm driving down the road, and I hit the horn and went, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> but I started thinking about that Biblically, Jesus didn't raise himself from the dead. He was dead. You go out to the cemetery if there's a thousand dead people buried out there and you, you, you offer a great reward for all 1,000 of them to come up out of the grave. None of them can do it, folks. They're dead. Dead people don't do anything except rot and deteriorate. That's all dead people can do. Well, how was Jesus raised from the dead? He didn't get tired of it. And uh, raise himself with a shout. Look at this verse. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. The Father raised him from the dead. Even so, the same way, we also should walk in newness of life. Here it is, folks. God, I can't do it. My flesh is dead flesh. I can't do it. Help me. Now, whether you know to say, help me with the same power and glory whereby you raised your son from the dead, whether you know to say that or not, that's the power he's going to use. You, you do have a decision to make about every decision you have to make. Did you get that? You have a decision to make about every decision you have to make every day. And you decide to do right or do wrong according to the word of God, not according to your feelings. You decide to do right or do wrong. And he... Will 
empower you to walk in newness of life. It's like this. This room's dark at night. You walk in here and you hit that light switch and the electric company empowers the electricity to surge through the wires and to the transmitters uh, uh, and transformers and, and come through our uh, fuse box and, and to the light switch that you just turned on. You don't go up and unscrew a light bulb and stick it in your mouth and zzz, 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 the light come out of it. Preferably you don't stick your finger in a socket. You'll light up <laughs> on your way down. <laughs> but you put faith. You decide to hit the light switch. And you put faith that the power company is going to have the power there, right? Well, folks, you decide to hit the light switch in your life. God, help me to quit doing this. And let him turn loose his power. The resurrection power. God, help me to do this and let him turn loose his resurrection power in your life. In fact, we see that decision here in Romans 6, verse 8 to 13. Notice how many times we see we have a decision to make here. In closing, Romans 6, 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, who raised him? The Father. The Father with his glory, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, just like what we just read took place with Christ. Likewise, reckon. Reckon's an accounting term. <laughs> it means to figure. Have you ever tried to figure something out and it came out kind of, Strange, and your friends listening to you, and they go, "Well, go figure, <laughs> figure it out." See? Well, once you got it figured out, you record it. Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. You're tempted with sin. You're, you've got an old habit. I believe old habits and and addictions are sins which d does so easily beset you. And you've got this attitude that it, we call it pushing your buttons. Your sister knows how to do that. Your brother knows how to do that. Hey, one day when you get married, you don't know how to push your mate's buttons. Shame on you if you do. You're supposed to be good for each other. It's not good that a man dwell alone. I will make him a help me, not a button pusher. <laughs> not somebody that's going to drive him over the edge, make him cuss, swear, start drinking, taking drugs, leave home, and vice versa. Uh, but... Uh, the Bible says we're dead indeed unto sin. God, this, this is something that's really bothering me. But I'm dead to it. Help me to be dead to it. But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, this is for Christians. And when you make him your Lord over the little parts of your life, he'll help you to be alive unto God. Now look at verse 12. Here's a decision. Let not sin therefore reign, rule. In your mortal body. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Here's another decision. Neither yield ye your members. Talk about the members of your body. Your eyes. Your ears. What you watch. What you listen to. Your mouth. What you partake of. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Here's another decision. You're saying no to sin. Yes to God. But yield ye yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. And we can go on and on about this. Folks, there is a decision to make, but not a decision to make in your own flesh. I'm going to try harder. But a decision to be dead, reckon yourself dead unto sin, the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and alive unto God, the things of God that are revealed in God's word. Alive unto God by the power of the Holy Spirit living in you and the power of the resurrection, whereby the Father raised his dead son unto life again.
Let's pray. God, please speak to our hearts. Lord, I've learned at the age of 66, and after being saved since I was eight or nine, over 50 years, almost, I've learned, God, well, over 50 years, almost over 60, not quite. I've learned that the dead flesh that I live in can drag down my spirit. And I thank you that I don't have to be resigned to an unspiritual life dedicated to the dead works of the flesh, dead works of the, of the world. But by your power, your resurrection power, that I can be alive unto you. Help our students to get these simple truths today. Help them to get these simple truths. And use them and pass them on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thou art dismissed. All right. Are we all?